Welcome back to another episode of Pod Talks with myself, Richie Bra and Daniela Del Carpio. So for today's topic, we're going to dive into something perhaps maybe slightly more um, sensitive and also quite serious, though, as well, mm -hmm. especially when we are thinking about your health and fitness and delaying that start, delaying taking action on um, making a start, working on ways to try and improve your health and fitness and making excuses for the reason, you know, and, and reasons why you're not getting ahead with that. So again, it might feel like this is a harsh or hard topic to mm. talk about, but I think it's just to remember that fitness and health and fitness, when we think about that, it's not just about going to the gym, running on the treadmill, going in and lifting weights or tracking your calories. It's a whole vibe. It's a whole lifestyle that we need to think about. And it's not that we're thinking about the next three months or 12 weeks or six months. We are looking at the long term implications of not starting and not taking your health and fitness seriously and the implications that's going to have on the longevity of you as a person, um, you know, where you are now, where you're going to be in five years and where you might even be at the age of like 60 or 70, which in my opinion, I do not look at as being old. Um, I know that I've seen two sides to the the 60s, if you like, or 60 year olds. I've, I've had the um, the experience of, of seeing many fit and healthy, inspiring 60 year olds. And I've also seen 60 year olds that are you know, the health has really got the better of them. And even we're thinking about 80, 90 year olds, people that have not taken their health and fitness seriously, they often live in regret. They wish they started today. Mm -hmm. They wish they started when they were younger. And when I'm saying younger, it's that key time when you are in your, you know, 20s, your 30s, and even your 40s. It's so, so important. So I'm going to open up this topic um, to Daniela as well. Um, so, Danielle, if you just sort of give me, I don't know, a couple of minutes on on sort of what you think so far about as we open this into this topic. Yeah, I think before I say anything, if you guys are like listening to this, like if you just listen to Richie and you're like, oh, this is going to be too harsh. I don't want to listen to the whole episode. I want you to stay because if you don't want to hear this, it's because you probably need to hear this. And if you know anyone that needs this, if you know anyone, maybe a family, a friend, your cousin, your sister, your uh, work, co-worker, if you know anyone that you know this person needs to start with the fitness journey, but you also know that this person is not, quote-unquote, ready to get started, please send them this episode because we want to spread this message. We want to make sure that we give this message very nice and clear. And like Rachel said, you might not like what we're going to say, but if we don't tell you this, who's going to tell you this? People around you, they love you. They don't want to have conversations like this with you because they love you too much that they are afraid of hurting your feelings but we love you and at the same time we want to see you succeed we want to see you live that healthy life we want to see you live that long life so yeah you're not gonna like this but i'm gonna be completely honest i'm gonna be very harsh i might sound maybe offensive and i really don't care because i just want to help you and if you don't like that i don't apologize but you need that okay so what i think about this We've had quite a few cases of, you know, people talking to us, wanting to start with a fitness journey, which is amazing. And then we have those conversations. We know that these people are having health issues, you know, high cholesterol levels. This is nothing to play around with. Pre-diabetic, again, nothing to play around with. High blood pressure, nothing to play around with. Heart problems, nothing to play around with. And when it's the time to... For them to get started with this, with their journey, you know, joining a program, starting with this, they make themselves believe that right now is not the time to get started. Right now, it's not the perfect time to get started just yet. They make themselves believe that they need a little bit more time. They need, they need a little bit more time to maybe try it on their own. They don't need a coach just yet. You know, let me try it on my own. Let me try, see what I can do on my own. Let me try, learn the environment a little bit more. Let me try, make all the mistakes on my own. 
you can do whatever you want. But if you know that you already have those conditions, if you know you already have those health problems, do you think your health is going to wait for you to try things for, for yourself to make all those mistakes, you know, put your health on hold? And then you're like, yeah, now I'm going to start being pre-diabetic again. Like, it doesn't work like that. The more you wait, the worse those problems are going to get. If you're pre-diabetic and you want to wait for the perfect time, I can guarantee in a few months from now, because you're not going to do anything about it, your doctor is going to tell you now you have diabetes. And now you have to rely on this medication to ensure that we can control everything. Your, your cholesterol levels are way too high now. So you have to take this other medication to control that. Your blood pressure is way too high now. You waited too long. I told you to do something about it and you didn't. Why? Because you are waiting for the quote unquote perfect time. Do you want that? Do you really want to be relying on medication for the rest of your life to help you live a healthier life, to help you control things that you knew are under your control right now? Because your doctors told you, they told you do something about it now, you know, lose that weight, be more active, um, be, be more careful with the things that you eat. Don't have too many takeaways. Do this, do that. If they gave you those warning signs that it's, it's still early, but it's still warning signs. Why? I just, I just don't understand. From one point, I can see why they're not ready to get started. I know that they have that fear of failing, that fear of making this decision and then nothing happening, maybe not seeing those results. But it's like, we're just not talking about losing body fat to look sexy or to feel confident about yourself. That's one thing that also helps. But we're talking at this point, we're talking about your health. And that's one thing that we only have one. You don't get two or three or four or five chances in life. With your life, you only get one. So I just don't understand why on earth do you have to wait for the perfect time? Like why? Like just help me understand. Like why do you have to wait? It's your health. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. I think that is very, 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 very valid. And everything you've said as well, and it's the harsh reality. But I think also perhaps maybe it's come from um, a, a culture of the fitness industry being this like shiny thing, this mm -hmm. thing that most people think about. Um, it's, you know, it's again, we're coming back to, they think it's just a physical transformation, getting a six pack, yeah. getting a big bum, um, feeling sexy on the, beach or whatever it is or in your clothes or whatever but it goes beyond that and I think people's understanding is that fitness is just an aesthetic thing and it's not something that literally helps your whole entire lifestyle um from everything to you know sh sharpening your your brain and and making you focus better at work to making you show up as um, the right influence or, you know, um, yeah, how can I say the right representation for your your younger family members or, or people around you and having a positive effect on people around you. I think it's really difficult for people to understand that unless they look at it as beyond, beyond that, beyond just being physical. Um, I feel like I'm rambling slightly here. <laughs> But um, what I wanted to say was, it's all also about perspective. And I think people, we all know how to exercise. We know some degree what healthy food is. You know, we know that being active is going to help, but it's not just knowing the stuff that is going to get you there. It's having the accountability that daily accountability, the community around you and that push and that perspective because we can be so self critical mm. and it's really, really important. And I also, if I bring this back to even just like simply about a fat loss or weight loss journey, that sometimes people think, well, I've learned the tools or I know what to do, I just need to do it. And that's mm -hmm. not why we are here. Yes, we are great at educating our clients and taking them that step further, but it's about helping open their mind and helping them realize that they do have a potential to be better. And actually it's giving them that daily push because people around mm -hmm. you often be judgmental when you are on a fitness journey and they may look at you taking care of your health, especially as if you're a woman, 
a woman who has responsibilities that has a, you know a career or maybe even a woman that has children you know and a husband for example it's like especially in Daniela and I's culture it's like well why are you putting yourself first when you have to look mm-hmm. after your family mm-hmm. first well no actually what you don't realize is that by you putting into yourself and your own health and fitness you are actually going to be around for your family longer um I don't think that people are going to find you selfish for for wanting to be around. But Mm. having poor health choices, it's not only going to affect you, it's going to affect your family in the in the long term. And unfortunately, to say this, if you do get struck down with, um, look, at at some point, we are all going to experience, unfortunately, this is the way life goes, you can never really predict what might happen to you um, through no fault of your own. And it's not to say that it's always your fault, but there are some diseases and um, health conditions that we can actually avoid uh, coming coming sooner or like we can delay the onset and Mm -hmm. we can also help manage the symptoms as well, just by taking care of ourselves first. So for example, you know, you kind of just go, well, this is what it is. I'm just going to deal with it. And, you know, you spend two months or three months or six months or a year, or you spend time trying to keep working on yourself. What you are doing is you're going into almost like a yo-yo effect in itself that you're starting, you're relying on motivation. None of us have motivation. A lot of us need a kick in, a kick up the ass if I'm on yeah. <laughs> And even for me and Daniela, we need people to help. A hundred percent. Push yeah. us. We both mm. have mentors. We have partners mm. that also help keep us accountable. And we have friends as well within our circle um, friends that Daniela actually Daniela and I share as well that are in our community mm-hmm. that help push us to be better and to be you know the the right have the right influence on the people that we support so our clients our followers um people that stumble across this podcast as well we are we have to be here to show up for you now if we are just relying on motivation there's going to be days where it happens, where it doesn't happen. But no, we realize that we have a commitment and we have, a, um, you know, we are here to provide a service and to provide support for people. So we need to be the right representation of that as well. And so, again, when I come back to family, your family, the the impact that you're going to have on them is you're going to put them at risk of following the same steps that you've done. Um, we yeah. also talk about, I guess, with with children, constantly seeing their parents like yo-yoing back and forth with a diet and making fitness thing like it's just this thing um, that they, they have to do when they've got a holiday and they need to get fit or look good. Well, no, actually, your children need to see you taking health and fitness seriously because it's a normal thing. A healthy diet mm-hmm. is... A- normal thing it's not something that you do just to get skinny yeah and I think yeah something that two things I want to say from this number one when you say you know sometimes people may seem like in our culture like if you look after yourself it's selfish and I know many cultures are like that but if that's the case let's say you start looking after yourself and maybe your friends tell you or someone in your family tells you like don't be selfish why are you doing this (laughs) let them say whatever they want to say because people are always going to have something to say. And if you keep worrying too much about what they say, you're going to keep letting this hold you back and you're simply never going to do anything about your health. So people are going to talk. Let them talk. Okay, you just do what's best for you. It's your life. It should be your choices, not their choices. Even if it's, even if it's you know your parents, someone that you love. As much as we respect them, because I respect, you know, every single member of my family, as much as I love them and respect them so, so much, it's my life. It's my choice. Obviously, there are going to be times if you're doing something that's going to help you. Yes, they're going to tell you, and that's something that we want. But if it's going to be something that's going to be beneficial for you, which is starting with your fitness journey, I don't see why not. I just don't see why not. This is not selfish. This is only looking after yourself. And something I was going to say, the second thing that you mentioned at the end about also like culture i think 
especially with kids you know I know I've heard some people I had some interviews with people that tell me it was normal for me to grow up in a family that takeaways were completely normal exercise was not normal for us you know exercise was something new for me we never look after our health we never look you know my parents never care about what we were eating it was takeaways pretty much every single day they let us have whatever we didn't have many vegetables you know we didn't have this and that so for some people having those takeaways having that unhealthy relationship well, not healthy relationship but that not very nutritious I guess nutrients meal plan it's very normal and for other people being a little more healthy it's very normal so you just got to think about like what do you want for your kids do you want them to follow those footsteps of having takeaways on a daily basis not exercising having heart problems having different conditions you know cholesterol diabetes or do you want to change things a little bit and start creating something that is going to help them be better or do better that they're going to be looking up to you and they're going to be following your steps and be like my mom she loves to work out i want to go with uh, for a run with my mom or i want to you know do the same things that my mom do is doing because kids are always watching they literally copy everything that you do i don't have kids but i do have nephews and nieces and i can see they do everything that my cousins do they like pretty much copy and paste you see them doing everything you see them eating the exact same thing you see them drinking the same thing and it's like if you don't want to think about yourself which I don't know why you're not doing it but if you don't want to think about yourself think about your kids it's like think how this is affecting your family or the people around you because that might be a motivation again motivation exactly what you say Rachel like, that motivation is not always going to be there and if you're waiting or yeah if you're waiting a little bit longer to get more motivated trust me you're just waiting to get worse for those conditions to get to worsen for the for that high cholesterol high cholesterol to get even higher for your doctor to tell you that now you have diabetes for your doctor to tell you now you have your blood pressure is too high you need to start doing this taking this medication blah blah there's just never gonna be the perfect time that like you will never feel motivated you will never ever gonna feel motivated yes some days you might feel a little bit motivated you know like yeah today it's the day i want to start with this something else gonna come up and that motivation boom it's going to go downhill and you're going to keep using the excuse because it's, it is an excuse of saying, yeah, I'll, uh, you know, I'll just wait for next week. Things are going to be better next week. I'm going to get more money next week. Uh, things won't be as stressful next week. How do you know what's going to happen next week? We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow or in the next 20 minutes. How do you know next week is going to be a better time? How do you know next week or next month or the next two months is going to be much better? It's stop waiting too much. Like, I feel like I'm going to keep saying this, but you just got to stop waiting. Stop waiting. I know. And actually what I wanted to do was um, bring it back to uh, when we think about money, for example, as well. And when we think about the takeaways or the eating out and the eating unhealthy. So firstly, we've got a financial burden, not in just one way, but in many ways. Now, Daniela, you and I, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but in New Zealand, where, where you live, um, you have a healthcare system, which is like mm-hmm. effectively is free, right? Because your taxes pay for yep. it. Yep. We have the mm-hmm. NHS here in the UK. It's free. Our taxes pay for it. But what we do know is that the burden that we have on the system is actually very, very high. And now we might think that, well, it's free. I take my medication. It's cool. cool. I'll wait for someone to sort me out. I'll wait for things to get worse. So I go for surgery. And this is not even just thinking about health conditions, but let's even think about like from a rehabilitation perspective. And we can even mm-hmm. think about things like arthritis here, right? Because arthritis, yeah. um, depending on the type of arthritis and the, the, the onset or the uh, stage of arthritis that you, that you have, Exercise is actually one of the key healers, if you like. It's a lot of the time when you, when if you start getting issues and your doctor tells you you might have arthritis, the initial steps or the initial process is actually to focus on getting stronger around that joint where the arthritis is affected. And now if we think about, for example, hips and knees, right? Because those can be, or knees especially can be the common ones. When we are thinking about other forms of arthritis, I get it, it's it's different, right? But when mm-hmm. we've got a reliance on the NHS or healthcare system, system, we are spending, we are wasting, if you like, 
public money on those services. We're creating longer queues. There's a longer term financial issue or burden, if you like, on those systems. And there are things that we can do to help manage them. And especially when we think about things like being pre-diabetic, actually having type two diabetes itself and when it does progress. Um, when we are thinking about other countries like the USA and I don't know, other places where you don't have a well-structured um, healthcare system, people are literally, and I, I have uh, clients that are not in the UK, I have uh, clients that are from abroad as well. They are in, in countries where you do have to pay out of pocket yourself that mm. you're wasting money on medical bills on medication and, you know, again, other potential strains further along. And if we are thinking about bringing it back to di uh, diabetes or even rehab needs, mm -hmm. there's surgeries as well. So that's one side of the financial burden that we don't think about. Then we can bring it back to the money that we've built up over time as a habit to waste on things like we haven't talked about. And I know you're loving mm -hmm. Alcohol, the waste on money, mm. alcohol, <laughs> yeah. on takeaways. And we're not saying that you're going out and spending 50 pounds on a meal every night. No, we're talking about the small trips to McDonald's that mm -hmm. you do every single day for lunchtime. And it's not always McDonald's, it's McDonald's, it's Subway, it's KFC. There oh, are yeah. there you are see. cheaper, there are cheap takeaway options, but in the long term, they have a financial burden on your pocket. Mm -hmm. So I just, yeah, I just wanted to kind of touch on that, really. Yeah, I think like people don't realize. So if you're listening to this, maybe you don't realize that too much because when you get those things, the McDonald's, uh, it's only $5, you know, it's only $10. It's only max $15. I'm going to get my burger, my fries, maybe my Coke, maybe my ice cream. And it's like little money, but it's a like little money that if you add it up at the end of the month, at the end of the week, that's money that you can be investing on coaching. You know, that's money that right now you're wasting on making your health a little bit worse. And that's money that you could be investing into getting that help to help you get started with this, to help you have that structure, have that guidance, build that a healthier relationship with food, um, get stronger, get fitter, you know, whatever it is that you want to achieve. But it's like, you just need to think about those little things. It's always the little things that add up. It's always the tiny little things. And I also think maybe because like things are free here in New Zealand, the UK, you know, like your health, you don't really need to pay. It, when things are free, people just don't take it. People take it for granted, sorry, when things are free. So I think maybe that might be one of the reasons why people are so chill about their health. Because like, if I get sick, you know, I don't, I don't really need to pay. We only pay like $18, I think, for the consultation. That's it, which is nothing. So I think that might be another reason why. I'm not saying it is, but I've, I'm guessing that's another reason because we don't really have to spend too much money if we do get sick. Medications, some prescriptions are free here in New Zealand, completely free. Some you might pay only $5, which is nothing. So I think people are like, oh, you know what? It's not, it's not much money. Like It's not really going to hurt me too much. And they just feel like they put their money up here and they put their health down here. And it's a huge gap between prioritizing their money and prioritizing their health, which again, it's something that for me, it's hard to understand because how can you make your money more important than your health? Yeah, Money is literally just a little piece of paper or, you know, something that is sitting on your bank account that doesn't have value. Yes, it has value, obviously, it buys you things, gives you things, give you freedom, freedom, but it doesn't, it's not going to give you that life it's not going to help you breathe it's not going to help you walk it's not going to help you move it's not going to help you eat it's not going to help you digest your food on yeah. the other hand things like you know taking care of yourself your fitness your nutrition your training those are things that are going to be beneficial even if you don't have the money you still have the life you you know you're still alive yeah they're going to save you money in the long term because actually one of the things I did forget, and um, when when you are engaged in like um, looking after your health, your fitness, and you're not spending those small little bits on your KFC, your McDonald's, your Starbucks, you're more, you know, you're more inclined to be following like a meal plan or a structure of some sort. Mm -hmm. And doing that in itself saves you money. It mm -hmm. saves you money when you are eating more or less 
the same sort of things. Uh, you've got the same sort of healthy foods in the fridge. You can make them stretch for longer. Like I know people often go, well, you know, veggies and, and fruits and stuff, they're expensive. Well, actually you'll start to learn about portioning your food, making it last, uh, you know, longer, doing a meal prep where you're saving time, you're saving money as well, because you are thinking about things ahead and in advance. Yeah, but then they say it's expensive. But then when they spend money on that McDonald's, that's not expensive, that's cheap. Or when they spend that money on that alcohol, that's not expensive, that's cheap. It's only once a week. You know, I don't do it too often. It's only once a week or once every two weeks. Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> you got to balance everything out. Like, what's more important to you? I think it's just, you know, thinking about what's more important to you, but like truly what's more important to you. Because I think some people say, honestly, I've had this before in the past where I ask people, what's more important to you? money right now telling me you know knowing that you have all these health issues or money and some people told me money money it's more important to me right now which obviously I was, I was so shocked and I was like did you I don't think you understood my question what's more important to you right now your health or money 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 is more important to me yeah and you know, I, you know, it's one of those things you just go like is it really like are you just saying this because you truly mean it or are you just saying this because you are afraid of something or, you know, there's something going on in your, you know, up here that it's making you feel or making you fear that if you pick your health, things are not going to go the way that you want it to go or that you're going to fail with your journey or that you're not going to be able to get that body that you want to have. Yeah, it's Everything. interesting. All priorities. It's very you know, interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting because we can take it to the extreme of like consumerism, buying things that we don't need as well. Mm. And often you know, nights out, um, they, they, you know, they can, people spend, you know, 50 to a hundred pounds or whatever on a night out. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's so much that we can really dive into. I mean, we, we've kind of moved on to financial, but if we kind yeah. of like finish up, if you like, with some of the more health implications in the long term of delaying your fitness journey, delaying that start, we come back to motivation. You're relying on yourself to just get on with it. You don't have that push tomorrow, Monday, the diet starts on Monday. Um, next month, uh, things will be better or, or hopefully I find the courage to get started on my own. Mm. Um, and that's the thing. People often wait on a hope or on a motivation. Yeah. And really the whole point or purpose of having a coach is to help push you along that journey, give you that accountability, make sure that you are sticking to, to those things that you are telling yourself that you are going to do. And Daniela, I'm sure you do this with your clients as well, but you know, even within the community as well, but to say to them, right, what are you going to do this week? What three things are you going to commit to that I need to help make sure that, that you stay on track with, that you are yeah. going to do you're going to do what you say or how can I help you make sure that those things are covered so you're not going uh okay I've committed to these things but nobody's checking uh, keeping an eye on you nobody's making sure that you are getting those things done yeah and I think like you said like hoping it's not going to take you anywhere and hoping I think just tells us as coaches that you need that help because if you're hoping that you're going to get that motivation somehow or that you're hoping that things are going to get better and you're hoping that you're not going to fail, you know, hoping is just a good way of saying for us that you do need that help. You need that accountability. Again, it doesn't have to be as obviously we would love to help you, but we cannot help everyone. We need to get to know you a little bit more and then see if and how we can help you. If we can, amazing. If not, you will find someone else that can help you better. But if you keep telling yourself that you're going to fail and if you keep postponing this to until the day that you're ready, Nothing is going to happen. And we don't want that for you. We want you to take that action right now. And we want you to do something about it right now. Because the perfect time was yesterday. Like literally yesterday. The second best time it's right now for you to take that action. And I feel like we can continue to talk about this more. So we should do a part two of this so we can finish this off. But we, yeah, we're running out of time now, guys. But yeah, as you can hear, we're like, we were you know onto it with this because it's something that we truly care about and something that we truly passionate about we say this literally from the bottom of our hearts because we've seen this with so many different women 
so like plenty plenty of women that are just waiting for the perfect moment that are just hoping that that perfect perfect moment is going to come and we've seen it time and time again when they wait and wait and wait then they come to us saying now i have diabetes or now i have this you know i wish i got started that day i wish i did something that about it back then of course yeah failures yeah failures leave you close so just you know learn from those mistakes as well of course and um just to kind of wrap things up or we'll finish things for now but I think when you mentioned diabetes, that's a really important thing that I feel like we are going to talk about a little bit more, maybe on part two, because this isn't just a disease that just happens to a fair few. It's very, very common now, and it's almost mm -hmm. too common. And there are things that we can do to um, stop that from happening. And of course, there could be genetic predispositions to it they you know but there, a lot of it is lifestyle factors we're going to finish this episode here i'd like to thank you for joining us here on pod talks um this has been daniela del carpio and richie bra you can find us both on instagram via our names i will leave and daniela will leave um our, our handles in the comments section again reach out to us dm us let us know what future topics you want us to cover and also some question. Yeah, we'll do some Q&As as well on, on uh, some mm -hmm. of the topics as well. So thank you again and we'll see you here next time.